Every time I've made a new case for my Raspberry Pi, there are always a few comments suggesting to add another fan or to make improvements to the cooling. So today I'm going to try and put these suggestions to the test by building a case that has as many fans as possible to find out if more fans really results in lower CPU temperatures. Now this wouldn't be a test without some sort of data to compare to, so we're going to need a baseline to see what the CPU temperature is in my usual Pi case design. I'm going to be comparing three configurations. A baseline small heatsink placed onto my Pi and in my standard desktop case design with a fan on the side panel. Then an ice tower cooler on the Pi like I use in most of my designs. And finally an ice tower cooler on the case where every possible space is filled with a fan. I'm going to run each test at the Pi's base frequency of 1.5GHz and I'll then overclock the Pi to 2.2GHz and see how that affects the temperatures. For each I'll be starting at room temperature which is about 25 degrees and I'll run a utility called CPU burn which maxes out the Pi's 4 cores. I'll leave this running until the temperature stabilizes or we start thermal throttling. So let's get the fan case made up. To start off I had to work out how many fans I'd need. Each fan is a square of 40mm and is 11mm deep. A Raspberry Pi is 85mm long and 56mm wide. So to cover the full length with the SD card sticking out a little at the back, we're going to need 3 fans. And to cover the width we'll need 2 fans. We also need a little bit of height to leave space for the ice tower on top of the Pi. So I'm going to make it 2 fans high. I'm not going to put any fans underneath the Pi as they're restricted by the desk and there's nothing to cool on the bottom. So I've got space for 6 fans on each side as well as 6 on the top and space for 4 fans at the front and back. We can't have any fans blocking the ports on the front of the Pi, so I'm going to get rid of the bottom 2 fans in that area, and I'll add some port cutouts into the design. So we're going to need a total of 24 fans. A not so quick AliExpress order, and 2 weeks later these arrived. Now I could just glue them all together, but that's going to be a challenge at the corners and is going to make mounting the Pi a little difficult. So we need some sort of frame to hold the fans in place. The easiest way I've got to make up this frame is going to be with some 2mm clear acrylic that I laser cut. I drew up this design in Inkscape. The design doesn't add any restriction to the fan's airflow, it's there purely to hold the fans in place. So the hole for each fan is slightly larger than the fan diameter. It's made up in two parts which will each be bent into a U shape to fit together, and I'll then add some 90 degree brackets in the corners to hold the top and bottom pieces together. So let's get these parts cut out. I bent the parts using an acrylic bending tool to heat up a line between the notches cut into the sides. I used a 90 degree bracket to make sure that the bends come out square. Both of these turned out to be a bit more difficult than I'd hoped. I bent the sides on the first piece the wrong way around, and had to go back and reheat them and bend them back the other way. The second piece was longer than the element on the bending tool, so I had to reheat it from both sides a couple of times before it was hot enough to actually make the bend. Now that I've got the two parts of the case made up, I actually think it's going to be easier to hold together if I glue some brass inserts into the corners. So I'm going to glue an M3 by 10mm standoff into each corner, which aligns with the corner fan screws. Next I need to get all 24 of these fans mounted onto the frame. To do this I'm using the 4 M3 button head screws and nuts that came with each fan. I realised at this stage that I hadn't really decided which of the fans would be pushing air into the case and which would be pulling air out, so I decided it would be best to have an even split. And since people often complain about air dead spots in my case design, I thought it would be best to have all of the fans on one side pushing air into the case and all of the fans on the other side pulling air out of the case. This is so that there are no fans opposing or competing with each other. Mm -hmm. 
With the fans all done, we can mount the Raspberry Pi and ice tower assembly into the case. With the bend in the acrylic, the ports are slightly too high, so I've added a nut as a spacer onto the bottom of each standoff so that the pie sits a little higher. I'm also adding a small rubber foot on each of the four corners of the base so that it doesn't vibrate itself around my desk. I've got some 90 degree cables for power and HDMI so that these can run through the base. The next challenge is how to power the fans. Each one runs on 5 volts and draws around 0.1 amps. They run individually on the Pi's GPIO pins, but when there's 24 of them we easily exceed the capacity of the Pi. We probably even exceed the USB-C power supply's capacity with the Pi running as well. So I have to rig up another power supply just to run the fans. This power supply can do 5 volts and 2.5 amps, which is perfect. Now I just need to connect each of the fans to the power supply. I've made up a few connectors to connect the fans up in groups, in a way that doesn't have them all running through a single set of jumper leads, which would overload them. I then used some zip ties to neaten up the wiring and to try and keep the wiring out of the fan blades. This also turned out to be a lot more difficult than I thought. There isn't a lot of room within the case, so every time I put the two pieces together some of the wiring landed up in a fan. After a bit of frustration I eventually managed to sort it out and get the fan spinning freely. I'm not going to power it up just yet, let's first backtrack a little and let me show you the results from the first two tests. I wanted to use the same Raspberry Pi across all tests for consistency. So the Pi that's currently in the fan case is the one that I used in the earlier test as well. For the first test, I put a small heatsink onto the Pi. I'm going to put the Pi into my desktop case and it'll be cooled by a single fan on the side of the case. I booted it up and ran CPU burn with the CPU clock frequency at the standard 1.5 GHz. The temperature actually stayed lower than I expected, and stabilised at around 53 degrees after 3 minutes. I then overclocked the Pi to 2.2 GHz and ran the test again. This resulted in significantly higher running temperatures, but still did not thermal throttle, and it stabilised at around 75 degrees after 4 minutes. For the second test, I put the ice tower onto the Pi as I usually do with my case designs. I'm using the same single fan mounted onto the side panel, pushing air into the case. The vents on the opposite side exhaust the warm air. The 1.5 GHz test stabilised at around 39 degrees after 2 minutes. The 2.2 GHz test stabilised about 10 degrees higher at 49 degrees, but this time taking 4 minutes to get there. So these are the figures we're now looking to beat with more fans. So let's turn it on. I wasn't sure what to expect, but to me it was somewhat underwhelming. I expected a bit more noise and to feel a lot more airflow around the case. It still looked pretty cool though. It's quite nice to see all the fans start off the same colour and run the same RGB loop for a few seconds before slowly drifting into a mix of different colours. Next let's boot up the Pi and see how it handles the test. First let's run the test at 1.5 GHz. The fan's already making a difference at the start. Our starting temperature is a little over 3 degrees lower than with the single fan. The temperature jumped up to 34 degrees quite quickly, but stabilised quickly as well. Next let's reboot it at 2.2 GHz and try again. Our starting temperature is now about 7 degrees warmer than at 1.5 GHz. So let's see what it stabilizes at. With the test done, the results are in. 
The fan case stabilized at 35 degrees at 1.5 gigahertz and 44 degrees at 2.2 gigahertz, both after around three minutes. So the fan case did have an improvement over the standard case, but not in a way I'd consider a dramatic improvement. The temperature decreased by an average of 4 degrees when running the 24 fans in place of a single fan. Given that we're now using over 2000% more power just to run the fans, and that most Raspberry Pis are not running flat out continuously, I'd say that using a single fan on a decent sized heatsink like the Ice Tower or Ice Cube Cooler is more than enough, even for overclocking. If you're really keen on keeping the temperature of your Raspberry Pi as low as possible, you'll have more fun water cooling it. It's also quieter, more power efficient, and cheaper than buying 24 fans. Let me know what you think of my fan case, and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see me try cool my power with in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.